Now we're going to have five minutes for Q&A. So if the speakers kind of come to the front, um, and if anybody in the audience has a question, um, after Q&A, we'll have closing remarks per person, and then we'll have dinner on end. So please stick around for that. So if anybody has a question, please raise your hand.
yeah, ooh, like it's still, still a complicated situation. So my answer is just, I keep living on today. And then I do it totally, five years. How can we participate in your, in your vision? How can we connect to your vision? For example, like you experienced how we get something. And also, no, it's not necessary to be a natural disaster or a nuclear disaster. Every people may have some accident, like car accident, having cancer, you know, or losing love, like broke up with your girlfriend, wife. I did experience life last year. <laughs> So, you know, if you live your life, it's not the same to the Tohoku or natural design, but any kind of challenge will shape your mind or your heart. And just, you know, look inside your mind and hear your voice, and that there should be a chance to find a future point between Tohoku and yourself. Could you just make sure that the audience knows where to look in the internet for, for the work they've done? Uh, the, uh, the website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a personal website. Oh, sure. And then the presentation? Uh, yeah, uh, later the studio will upload the, all the presentation play from the YouTube and uh, I will write a script on my blog. Thanks. Any other questions? Thank you for the wonderful speech. Um, I have a question for uh, Serena and Jake. So uh, when you are communicating with local people in Fukushima, when you are working with them, um, trying to help them, help, help them out, what kind of communication strategy do you take to ensure effective communication without hurting their feelings or uh, triggering potential people? It, it, I, like I said, I, I got there 48 hours after the tsunami and I didn't know anybody. Uh, I ended up staying in a refugee camp for three weeks and during that time I got very close with people. Um, we ate and we drank a lot every really. night. And through those experiences, I felt like I was really brought into the community in, in a very close way. So I, I, I was working mainly as a journalist when I went in, but then I, I, I think we share a very similar experience where I consider them family in the end. And they didn't speak much English, I didn't speak much Japanese, but we communicated um, really just from a deeper place. And I still go back there. I, I, I consider them, yeah, like family. So I, I go and I, I stay in their this place houses, and to me, I just feel like I'm coming home. Um, and then for the film, I have people with me that will help give me initial translations. And then when I come back to New York, it's a really long process of trying to get the words really precise. Thank you. In this case, I would say I should speak louder than words, just by being there, just by the um, experience the same thing. Uh, opened um, a, a dialogue between uh, people I had never even met, um, like the, the English conversation uh, group. They had heard through rumors because as the only foreigner in your town, you're kind of a celebrity. And so through contacts, connections of other connections, they um, contacted me and asked if I would talk to them about why I decided to stay. And um, just by showing that you're there, especially with my students, um, it, it, when school started up again in April, they saw that some things stable, some things were still there, not everything had changed. And so I I was there, and so it was English classes as, as pretty much as normal as possible, and um, they, they played as normal as possible, and uh, so it was just by being that, and you just keep your ears open, and you, they, they just, um, when they're talking about how they felt or their worries, I had a lot of teachers at home who tell me, well, I'm a foreigner, see, so it's, it's, it's okay. Thank you so much. One last question. Hi, good afternoon. 
afternoon. My name is Adam. I was also a JET in Nagano 2006 to 2002. Uh, thank you for a very inspiring uh, event. Uh, I feel like uh, the university creates a very fertile and open uh, venue for these types of dialogues about recovery and sharing feelings and entrepreneurship. And I was wondering, because I'm just starting, starting, uh, starting to learn about the connections between New York and Tohoku, what programs may be in place between Tohoku University, Fukushima University, uh, Sendai, and universities uh, in the New York uh, metro region? Because I'd like to get involved in creating more of these opportunities, uh, not only in creating more resilient um, cities, which I know is a theme in Rise New York City, uh, it's regarding energy and build spaces, but also the energy that uh, young students bring um, with regards to entrepreneurism, and I'd like to be a part of that. And I just wanted to hear your thoughts. Uh, I'm not directly, uh, uh, I don't work directly with, but um, a colleague of mine, uh, he was actually a former professional advisor before the earthquake happened. He's now an instructor at Fukushima University, and he's in charge of the uh, of a study abroad program, where it's uh, he goes to different he goes all over the world. He goes to different colleges all over and promotes um, a two week to month uh, study um, home study program where uh, students can go visit and see the sites and visit the temporary housing and interact with the people there and the children and get them involved and interested and advocate for them. Um, and I'm not quite sure what the program is called, I can look it up. Um, but he, he's gone, I believe he's going to Korea next, but he's been in Europe and over here in the States. I don't know directly with the New York area. Actually, I live in nearby the Fukushima University, and I know a lot of, uh, I know many friends in Fukushima University, and the quality of, some kind of quality of the students in Fukushima University is different, is what is before the disaster, because they organized the Fukushima University Volunteer Center by themselves, by the students themselves, and they started uh, so many activities uh, after the earthquake until now. So I can say that if to connect New York to Fukushima by uh, the bond of university, I can say that they can be a guide or they can be a, a coordinator of university because they already have so many experience after the disaster, I think. I think also being a filmmaker and having covered the aftermath, um, I think that Tohoku has kind of an image problem at this point and that is defined only as a place that had something bad happen to it. And while that's true, it's moved on, and I really hope that um, that the rest of the media starts picking up on this a little bit, and I'm certainly, in my film, also showing a lot of the beautiful things of certainly Fukushima. Um, you know, just imagine, close your eyes for a second and think of the most beautiful place you've ever been in your life. It could be the Alps or, you know, a vacation resort. Um, you know, whatever image comes to mind, then just give that name Fukushima, because Fukushima is absolutely beautiful. It's really a paradise, and so I go back because I think it's beautiful, and I enjoy it. I'm not making a sacrifice. I enjoy being there and telling those stories. Um, and so I think bringing, bridging it together, later Yuhei is going to have some things from Fukushima. It's really gorgeous, high quality, nice stuff. It's going to make your life better. And I think that if you look at these regions as places of discovery in your own life, 
then you're also giving something back to them. Um, but I can also understand why people would shy away because of the image now. So I'm, I'm really hoping that in, in the years to come, uh, the image changes into being the beautiful place that it is. Um, I actually just wanted to mention uh, two programs that um, are available programs that directly connect New York with Toshiba. One is organized by our organization, the Consortium for Japan Relief, and it's called the Nishimiya Fellows Program. Um, with the generous support of the Rockefeller Group and the Japan Society, we um, fund two to three uh, students who have an interest in Japan, the disaster, um, disaster medicine, recovery, um, to go to Fukushima Medical University and spend about a week there participating in um, disaster medicine um, seminars and also going out into the field and meeting um, some disaster victims. And that is how um, Kenny and Yuhei met Shobei because um, Kenny and Yuhei went to Fukushima Medical University last year and that's where they met him. Um, another one is by a close friend of our group, um, Dr. Robert Yenizaw, who actually had to step out, but he is affiliated with Mount Sinai uh, Medical University, and he um, does two things. He does something similar to Nishiya Fellows Program, where they send um, two students to Fukushima Medical University, and it's a more immersive program, and it's a similar goal of sort of um, getting into the field, um, attending lectures with medical students, um, but that's more for about a month. And he also does something else, um, that is connecting families of 9-11 with um, families affected by the 3-11 disaster. And he um, has sponsored or has helped families um, 9-11 actually go to Fukushima and the Tohoku area and um, meet with families there. So those are two programs that, um, medical programs at least, that directly, that directly connect um, the two cities. I think um, also, I think Columbia and Mount Sinai, they host medical residents from So there's a lot of interaction between New York and Fukushima. I think that's great. Well done. Thank you. So now we're going to have closing remarks at a dinner. And I think at the reception, you guys can ask more questions and have to continue the dialogue between all our speakers and whoever else is in the audience. Uh, let's do another round of applause for our speakers. Brief closing remarks because I know everyone's eager to get to the um, reception. So I hope that you have all enjoyed what you saw and you heard today. Um, the idea behind making this symposium into an amalgamation of personal stories is to make you feel like this gathering of over 100 people um, is actually more intimate and therefore to make you feel connected on a personal level to Fukushima. Um, at the end of this evening, I hope that you'll walk away with um, not only a better understanding of the current state of but also a broader perspective on the various individuals who have invested their time um, and effort in Fukushima despite national and international uncertainties. Um, today's inspiring speakers are part of a larger group of people who are really transforming Fukushima's landscape in innovative and exciting ways that um, truly deserve our attention. And as um, Terry Mee from Jake's film and Shohei said, um, you know, let's help spread the word that Fukushima is a nice place, that's a beautiful place. Um, and so let's continue this conversation of Fukushima, you know, not just tonight at the symposium, but in the months to come and hopefully um, in the years to come. And so thank you very much for coming, and we hope to see you next year.